From God. From God. Now, what, now, I want to be very clear about this part here in particular. See, I used to think when I first started in ministry that I, I, I would evaluate someone's engagement if they wrote down everything they had. But that's not really what, that's not, that's the words of God. So my role is to go back in here to make sure I'm spending time with God to share a message from the word of God for you to get a word from God. What are we saying here? Sometimes something will be shared in a sermon that all, it takes you and connects you to something you've already been thinking about. And all of a sudden you start writing down some notes, not about what I'm sharing, but God is speaking to you and what was said, and now it gives you further illumination. Now you may have missed what goes on later on, but you got the slides. So you just go your way when you hear that word from God. So our role is not just trying to memorize the Bible, it's important, but to make sure I'm trying to get a word from God. Try to understand now, a word from God is in other words. So once I'm getting a word of God, I, let, let me make this clear. Suppose, for example, you are, I'll give you an example that I mentioned before about the name of the church. I'm in, the, I'm in a service. Somebody is, is ministering. And somewhere in the context we're being shared, the, I, he said something about peace. And as he said peace, I wrote down peace. Because I told you I, was, I had all these other names for the church. I had, there's going to be a God made, there was already another God made Christian church. There's going to be Cornelia, I couldn't spell that, and you couldn't. So I decided, so I went back in here, and so I mean, you got a C or a K, so now I deal with a, so a piece. And, and, and I got to say, I don't know what else the man said in that sermon, but I just had on my paper peace. And after a while, before I ended up leaving the message, I had the whole thing, Shalom Community Christian Church. So now, it was no disrespect to him. But that was a word from God. There's no verse I can go to to say, name your new church, Shalom Community Christian Church. So, the, I, so as I'm hearing the word of God, I'm now getting a word from God. You got some stuff right now you've been believing God for. You've been praying for something for a while. And there's something that's going to be said. And it may, it may be when as soon as it's said, it just quickens you. It, it, just, it, it, just, it really gets your attention. Stay with that and write down what God is sharing with you right then. If you missed the notes, you got the slides. Go back in and stay with that because God said, I want you to get to a point where you start getting a word from me. That, that you now are so sensitive to my leading that I tell you, when, I, that when you get to the stop sign, you want to go right and I tell you to go left. I want to give you a word from me, but if I can't get a word from God until I, get a, I know the word of God. Because here's the point. Because if I don't know the word of God, I may think the word from God is from him, it's not. The word from God lines up with the word of God. So if you get a word from God right now and say, well, at this point, God told me to go over here and say, and, and say, say, you know what, you, 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 my, you my husband. Well, that man been happy married 35 years. That, 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 that's not a word. That's not a word from God. That's a word from somewhere, but it ain't from God. So, that, so I got to make sure I have a word. Once I know the word of God, I can't evaluate the word from God. That's the revelation there. Then we talk about authority at that point. We spend some time on that one and talk about this delegated strength. You have that in your notes as well. And now, let me just read this with me, please, about authority. Please read this. Believers continuously remember to do everything in the natural to get positioned to receive the supernatural. In other words, we have to do our part in the natural. And as we've done our part in the natural, God in turn, we position ourselves to receive the supernatural. The overtake we had there from that, that month as well. Then from the, so you have all these in your notes as well. The rest, this rest, we talked about that in June, rest. I want you to read this verse with me, please, from Hebrews chapter 4, verse 10. Let's read this together. All who have entered into God's rest have rested from their labors. Just as God did, God did what? Rested after he created the world. So how do we, we rest in the Lord? Here's the problem. God, I thank you right now. You've already taken care of that problem. And I'm trusting you right now to lead me to know what to do. So labor is when I'm worried. Labor is when I'm trying to go get another cash advance. Labor is when I'm going to try to hit somebody else. They already changed their phone numbers. They don't want to hear from me. Labor is doing that. Resting says, God, you already have a solution to my problem. I'm trusting you right now in the name of Jesus, already done, and I am now open for you to direct me about how to get this done. See, when I'm worrying, I'm laboring. When I'm doubting, I'm laboring. 
when I'm fearful, I'm laboring. But when I know that God has already done it, I'm just now trying to get position to receive it. That's when we rest. You got to know that? So, so this rest. So, so God rested. He, God was not tired on the seventh day. He, was, he rested because it was already complete. Then we talked about dominion in July. We talked about that part there as well. Say, what is this right here? Dominion is what? That when we got born again, dominion was part of the benefit package. Last month we talked about this whole idea of imputation. Imputation, imputation. And we talked about in, this impartation of imputation. And what's imputation again? To charge to, charge to another's account. And we talked about this young girl right here who's being happy about having a credit card. Whose credit card is probably? It's yeah, not hers. So she's thrilled about it because when the bill comes, she didn't have to pay. So now, everybody in here that has more than one kid, do you know how all your kids have different personalities? And you want, you know, almost like they ain't come from the same people. So the idea is they different personalities. And so, so I, so I want you, so here, we went out one time to eat with Andrea, another time with Erica. Every time the bill comes, I say, they gonna, she's going to pay me, going to one of the dollars. One of my daughters would just go back and get rid of the bill for and I'm like, oh no, I got it. The other one would say, I'm not paying in fact. I need to take out order because I want to put it on their credit card for the rest of the week as well. Now, I'm not going to tell you which one does it, but totally different. So yesterday, they ran around some errands. And, you know, you know, we live in the country, so, you know, it's not like a, you know, like a, it's not a teller around the corner. So I'm looking at my wife, she's like, how much money you get? She, I said, I, I, you know, you'll give me about a dollar a week, so you know I have it. You, know, you don't want to give it to me, so if you gave me more money, I have more money. So that's how much money you get. She said, I got two dollars. I said, oh, yeah, yeah, the country, two dollars. So she said, well, she said, I guess you got to give them your debit card. I said, those two? Because I've seen the damage they have done before. And so to their credit, they go out and then when, and, and, and Andrew comes back in and say, and, and gives me that credit card back with money. I'm like, oh Lord, what did she do? <laughs> they went out here and was supposed to, I asked them to pick up something for me and they got overcharged and, and Andrew goes on her phone and looks over there and says, and saw it was like a $30 difference and turns right back around and says, oh no, on my phone, this is what the cost is. You're not gonna charge me this. And they said, like, okay, and gave her the money back. So now the money's still my charge. It's still in my account, but I got some more money back. But the idea was, I, I, I was happy, and now I appreciate I can give them the card now, well, no, yesterday, <laughs> and not feel like this like I used to before. So the idea, so the imputation is to charge on another's account. So this month we're talking about, and, and here's our point we talked about last week. On every account, on every life, there's only one charge. You can't have sin and righteousness on the same life. Come on, believe me. Can't have sin and righteousness. It's either going to be sin in here or it's going to be righteous in here. What, at this point, it says that Jesus, read this with me, God made him being Jesus to be what? Sin. sin for us. Keep going. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And what we talked about before was, and I was going to come here, and so I already talked to them coming up earlier. When we say, if I have this, if this represents my life, if this is righteousness, righteousness is there. Well, if I have this, this is sin, can sin get in? No. Why? Doesn't fit. Because there's only room for one. And these people talk about this point, you can send your righteous away in you, and this point, your behavior turns. No, you got a righteous nature that can still do wrong, but your nature is still righteous. Your nature is still righteous. And there's only room for one. There's not room for two in here. Let's see, you know, the, the idea there's only room for one. So Jesus took our sin and left us with righteousness instead. And so now the other piece, so now, as we talk about this righteousness, so this month we're talking about this whole idea of fear. Now, again, I want to be clear about this idea of righteousness, because I don't ever want to talk about the fact that we now are righteous without this part. Read this with me, please, again. You are free to choose, but you are not free from the consequences of your choices. Just because we are righteous 
Sin still has consequences. Would you read this with me, please? You are free to make your own choices. You are not free to choose the consequences. So just because now our sins have been placed on Jesus and his righteousness on us, whenever we sin, there's still going to be consequences. Say amen to that. Whenever we sin, there's still going to be consequences. And now as a result of this, so this last we have here by way of, so I want you to go back and turn your outline now if you would, please. And I want to give us just an F and an E for today and then have an opportunity to go back in and talk about where we are for, for this month in particular. So this happens, so this point that we talk about on this, what we have from Genesis chapter 15. Here's your F right here. Read this up on the screen with me, please, from King James. Fear not, Abram. I am thy shield and thy great and thy exceeding great reward. So God is about to take Abram, and this is chapter 15, change his name in Genesis chapter 17, verse 2, from Abram to Abraham. But what's the first thing God tells him? He's about to be made the father of the nation, a multitude. And remember now, at this point, he at this point didn't have any children, already old. And God says, don't you fear, because I'm about to go back on your shield and I'm your great reward. Oh, I love that. So what God is letting us know is that I don't need you to fear because the work I have for you to do, I'm going to be a shield to keep some of the fiery darts away that the devil is trying to throw you away. I'm going to be a shield that when they try to stop you, you can still focus on me. I'm going to be a shield that you can still trust me. I'm going to be a shield I'm going to brush some things from me. So there's some stuff happening while you're doing the will of God that you have no idea that God is stopping you coming your way. Have no idea what, what the devil had planned. But God says, I'm your shield. I'm your great reward. I just need you to trust me and rely on me. But I first of all need to help you recognize, don't fear. Fear not, Abel. I'm going to make you the father of many nations. Don't be afraid. But I need you to remind you, I am your shield and I am your exceeding great reward. Another translation says, read this please. Fear not, Abel. I'm your, I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. What are we saying? I'm telling you, whenever we follow God, we always get a good reward. Yes. I mean, not just a, good, a great reward. Whenever we follow God, we always get a great reward. You know what it says in Hebrews 11, that at this point, that, that the one who seeks him, the, the one who diligently seeks him, will be rewarded. I'm not seeking him to be rewarded. I'm seeking him because he's good. And while I'm seeking him, I'm going to be rewarded as well. Abraham, Abraham, don't you be afraid. God says, I'm your shield. And I'm also, I'm going to, your reward in trusting me. Your reward in believing in me. Your reward in standing for me shall be very great. Anybody here ever have a great reward from God? Anybody ever have a great reward from God? Well, standing away sometimes, what's getting our great reward is forgetting that God is our shield. And also at that point, fear. That when I don't fear, know that he's my shield. At that point, the reward should be very, very as well. And I want to give you one other. Let me give you an E right here as we get ready to finish this up as well. The E, and we pick, pick, this E is right here. Eleazar. Eleazar. So if you look at that scripture, that portion of scripture very well, it talks about Abram is there and, and some servants are there as well. And Eleazar is one of them. Now why are we talking about this person? Because his name reminds us, I love this. His name reminds us that God is a God of help and God is help. How many of you have ever been helped by God? Yes. I said, how many ever been, I said, how many ever been, give God, if you ever been helped by God before? Yes. The other God. God is help and he's a God of help. That whatever we're going through, it says, please write this down, Psalms 46, 1. He says, he's a very present help in a time. Help me, Holy Ghost. He's a very present help in a time of trouble. See, President has said, in other words, when, when I'm in trouble now, I don't need help tomorrow. I need it now. He's a very present help. Then at the moment when you need him, at the moment when you need help, he's a very present help in the time of need. I love this. Eleazar, that he's a God of help. So our infinite God is our help. Can you just give God one more hand down of praise for being a help every day? I said, if God is I'll help you. Now, this is the last time we have. Read this with me, please. Read this together. God is my helper. With the Lord as our helper, 